Good evening everyone, good evening to the ministries, all the way from Caledon, USA, what a beautiful part of that country, I'm so very blessed and expectant for what the Lord is going to do tonight, I want to say thank you to Pastor Rhoda for inviting me, God bless you man of God, I'm going to wait a little while for people to hop on, you know when you speak to someone for the first time, doesn't matter if you're thousands of miles apart, it's the first time that you've met them, but when the Holy Ghost is there, you just feel a connection. So I really praise God for connecting us, and I feel very blessed to be coming to you tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. There's some people hopping on. And you know what? When Pastor George and myself was talking about, you know, the details of, of what time we're going to go live and how the whole thing is going to work out, he said to me, no, we planned it for 8 o'clock. So I said, okay, that's fantastic. He said, yes, by that time, the children's in bed, they clean, they eat, everybody's happy, and the women can find a, a nice spot to relax and to receive the word of the Lord. And that is just how it goes. Even though August month is the month where we honor women for what they do, we all know that it's a job that happens 24-7, 365. And we honor the women. For who they are and, and what they do for us on a daily basis. And I just heard the Lord say, you know, that tonight, even though we're normally taking care of everyone else, the Lord is saying, come away with me, my daughter, my precious beloved daughter, and I want to take care of your heart. I want to minister to you tonight, my love and my peace. And I want to fill you with fresh oil, fresh joy in my presence, because you are deeply, deeply loved. And that's the word of the Lord tonight. And when the Lord gave me the word that, that he'd have me speak two or three months ago, I was sleeping, resting in the afternoon, and I just felt the presence of God come in my room. And I woke up, and hi, Tracy, God bless you. And I felt the Lord Jesus standing so close to me, and I began to cry at his presence. And he said to me, Kim, now is the hour that you need to tell my beloved daughters that they need to arise and shine. And become carriers of my love and my power just where I've placed them, just where I've positioned them for my glory. Because in this hour that we're living in, Jesus is coming very, very soon. And the harvest is ripe and the laborers are few. And so in the past season, you know, I feel like women were happy to be in the backgrounds, working things out, being a support. But the Lord is calling them to come to the forefront, wherever He's positioned them. And I'm not saying we want to take over the positions of the men of God in our life. No, we're still there to support and to honor them and to pray for them. But it's time for us to rise up in the grace that God has given to us in His power, right where He's positioned us. And I want to greet some people this evening. There's Andre Rode, Belinda, Patty van Gran. God bless you, woman of God. I feel really blessed and expectant for what God's going to do here tonight. Amen. My dad is even on. <laughs> Hi, dad. So I know the Lord is really going to just pour His love into His bride, into His daughters tonight and reaffirm His love to them. I believe that God wants you to know how deeply, passionately, crazy, head over heels in love with you that He is. And you know, for women, sometimes that's like a hard thing for us to grasp because of, of our backgrounds and where we come from and stuff like that. But I, I believe that the Holy Spirit is really going to make Jesus real to our hearts tonight. And before we do anything, I just want to love on Him. Because you know that's what I do. This is just the time where we can kick back wherever you are on your bed or in your lounge, wherever. And just let the world fade away and love on Jesus. You know, our praise is powerful. When we praise the Lord, let me tell you. We strike fear and confusion into the camp of the enemy. And the Lord shows up as a mighty man of war in the midst of what we're going through. So just for a second, just begin to love on Jesus and tell him how amazing he is, how wonderful he is, how glorious he is. That song's been on my heart the whole day. The lift of fine he says, as wonderbar, ja, das wonderbar, ons prijs sy naam. The lift of fine he says, as wonderbar, wonderbar vir my, kom ons vir jyrik sy naam, kom ons vir jyrik sy naam. Die mense verander, maar Jesus nooit. 
Kom ons by heerlik sy naam, en dat hy my so lief het, is wonderbaar, wonderbaar, ons prijs sy naam. Dat hy my so lief het, is wonderbaar, ja, dis wonderbaar vir my. Kom ons verheerlik sy lieflike naam, kom ons verheerlik sy naam. Die mense verander, maar my Jesus nooit, kom ons verheerlik sy naam. Halleluja Jesus, and in moments like these, Lord, I sing out my song, I sing out my love song to Jesus. And in moments like these, Lord, I sing out my song, sing out my love song to Him. Come on, tell Him tonight. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. I, how I love you. Oh, we bless you. We honor you, King Jesus. We glorify you in this place. Holy Spirit, you're so welcome here tonight. And we come before you with open hearts, with expectant hearts, and we say, move upon our hearts like only you can do, and make Jesus real to us tonight. Come and change us and transform us into your image, Father. Use us mightily for your glory. Mm -hmm. We honor you, and we say, come and move and have your way. In Jesus' precious name, you're so welcome, Holy Spirit. We love you so much. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. More people's watching and tuned in. Hi, Han Hanali. <laughs> God bless you, Kaylin. And tonight, I just want to encourage all of the precious daughters of the Most High God that you are deeply and completely loved by Him. And I was mentioning earlier that, you know, when we grow up as little girls, coming from Cape Town, you hear it all the time, conditioned that love is conditional we have to look a certain way and be a certain way in order for people to accept us and to love us you know if you don't have the right eyes if you don't have the right hair if you don't have the right um, skin color you know families and the people that we love make more of of the sister than of you and it, it hurts you you know you, you come away with a feeling that you're not good enough you're not worthy enough to be loved and to be accepted Amen. That you, you don't have a sense of value. And we carry it through our teenage years when it's important to wear the right clothes and be able to go to the right places. And if we don't do that, you know, we carry that stigma of, you know, I just, I'm not making the grade. I'm not good enough to be loved. And even as we come to be women, we put pressure on ourselves to have the right degree, to marry the right guy, to live in the right house, for our children to go to the right schools and have the right grades and all of this stuff. And we think if we get everything just right, then maybe, you know, we'll earn the love and the respect of the people around us. And maybe we'd earn the, the love of God. But that's not how God's love works. And we all know that's not how the world works. Because you can have all of those things. And people will still betray you. People will still let you down. You'll still struggle with the feelings of rejection. Because the love of God is the only thing that can truly fulfill our hearts as human beings. Because He created us. And I believe He wants to teach us that we have to be become secure in our, in our identity as His beloved as beloved of the Lord. Because in life things get rough. We go through rejection. We go through disappointment, failure. All these hurts come at us. And if we don't know who we are. And, and it leaves us in a, in a position where the Lord can't use us. So he wants us to go through life knowing, being secure that we are deeply and completely loved by him. Amen. No matter what the opinion of the world says. The, his opinion is the only opinion that counts. And that is that we are completely loved by him. And so this love this evening, my beloved daughters of the Most High God, it's a crazy love. This love, the Bible says that while we were still sinners, Jesus died for us. We weren't right with Him. We wanted nothing to do with Him. Our lives were messy. And in that broken, messed up state, He gave His life for us. 
that in itself should, should show us how much and how deeply the Lord loves us. Just in our messed up state. That's the crazy love of God. This love is a love that pursues us. When we go off and do our own thing and leave the Lord and pursue the lust of our flesh and fall on our face, that love is there to come. He picks us up and He brings us back into His presence. Even when we doubt the Lord, you know, sometimes we pray and we trust in God for certain things in our lives and we see things happening for the people around us and we become bitter in our hearts and we become angry at the Lord and we're not praying the way we should. We're not seeking Him the way we should. We're not worshipping Him the way we should. But you know, even in that state, He still remains faithful. He still comes through for us. He still brings the healing. Because that's his nature. He's a good, good father. He's faithful when we remain faithless. Hallelujah. Even in those moments, and a lot of us are going through that right now, when we feel like there's nothing left to live for in our lives. Maybe we come to rock bottom where we don't have any hope for the future. It's even hard for us to get up in the morning. Even in that state, the Holy Spirit comes with His grace, with His mercy, with His compassion, and He picks us up and He breathes His love into us. He breathes His life into us, and we find the courage and the power to move on and to trust Him. To work the miraculous in our life. That is the glorious love of God. It's a relentless love. It's a pursuing love. That love leaves the, the 99 to go over after the one. That's how precious we are to Him. It's how I want to, I want to pray tonight that the Holy Spirit really makes the love of God so real to you. And something even worse than that, that can boggle our minds. How crazy the thought is, is that God delights to use us. Just in our insignificant, unworthy state. He delights to use us for His glory. Isn't that amazing? You know, many times we hear this, this phrase when people bring the Word of, of God. And it says, God doesn't call the qualified, but He qualifies the called. And it's like, you hear it a lot, but it's the truth. If you read the Word of God right through the Bible, we see account after account of God delighting to use the underdog, the person sitting in the corner that's despised and rejected and broken, and He takes that life and He puts His power and His anointing on it and turns it around into something beautiful that brings Him glory. That's His heart. And so I want to share with you just very quickly some of the women in the Bible where we see that side of God's nature, nature really come to the forefront. And one of them is Esther, the book of Esther. So Queen Esther was a dasa. She was a poor orphan. She didn't have money. Her uncle Mordecai took her in. She, was, she didn't really have hope for the future because she was poor. The chances of her getting married were slim. But the Lord took her from obscurity and placed her in the palace, the highest position in the country and because you know even though she had nothing she had one thing that was a deep love for the Lord and she said you know what even if they kill me I'm going to be obedient and I'm going to go before the king and plead for the lives of the people of Israel and because of her obedience and she, when she led um, all of Israel in fasting and prayer the Lord honored her and because of this insignificant little girl and her love for God and her obedience to Him, God turned around the whole destiny of that nation and saved the whole of Israel. That's crazy that God used this insignificant orphan girl and used her to bring salvation to, the, to His people in such an incredible way. And that's what He wants to do in our lives. If we look at Ruth, Ruth, now, Ruth wasn't even a child of God. Ruth was a Moabite. She didn't even know God. But she had married an Israelite. And she came to the place in her life where she'd lost everything. Her husband died. Her brother-in-law died. Her father-in-law died. And she was left with nothing. And in those days, you know, if, if you became a widow, things were really bad for you. Because you couldn't support yourself. You couldn't make money for yourself. And really, your life was, was just spent in, in really dire straits. So she came to the place where she had nothing. And a lot of us are there today. We feel like we're losing everything. Maybe we've lost love one after love one in the situation that we're in. Maybe we've been laid off from work. Maybe our kids are struggling with drugs and gangsterism. And it feels like everything has been stripped away from us. But you know what? Ruth recognized the love of God in Naomi. She recognized the true God, the God of Israel. And she said to Naomi, when Naomi said, you need to go back to your people and get yourself a husband. She said, no, from today, your God will become my God. And where you go, I will go. She came to the point where she had nothing left but God. And she realized if she had him, she had everything. And she followed Naomi. And the Lord brought Boaz into her life, a man of God. 
And he brought the favor and the blessing of God into her life. And the Lord honored her so much that she became a part of the lineage of Christ. Isn't that awesome? The Lord did the exact same for Rahab, a, a prostitute, the lowest of the low. You know, in those days, people spat on prostitutes. They scorned them. They kicked them. They despised them. She woke up every day to that kind of, of ridicule and living in shame. But because she recognized the God of Abram, Isaac, and Jacob to be the true God. And she said, I'm going to um, protect these spies and hide them. And she hung that, that scarlet thread out of a window, which is symbolic of the, the blood of Jesus. When the Israelites stormed Jericho, she and her whole family were saved. And the Lord honored her and turned her life around from a life of shame to a life of dignity. She married the Israelite and she too became a part of the lineage of Christ. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that glorious? Doesn't that display the heart of our Papa God tonight? That He delights to take things that are messed and broken, lives that are broken and torn, and put His anointing and put His oil on them and turn that life around to bring Him glory. That is the God that we serve. And one of my, my favorite accounts in the Bible is the story of Mary Magdalene. She was a prostitute. She was broken. She was really empty. She was looking for love her whole life. And she made her way through that room where, you know, they wanted to get her out. They despised her. She had no place to be there. She had no right to be in the presence of the Lord. But she pushed her way through and she took her little treasure box. Glory to God. She took her treasure box, which was her life savings. The Bible says the oil that was in there was about a year's worth of salary. Everything that she had, she took it and she broke it. On the feet of Jesus. She was saying to him, Lord, everything that I've accumulated in my life that I thought was so precious to me is worth nothing compared to the love and the compassion and the forgiveness and the acceptance that I found when I encountered your love. And she worshipped the Lord. I feel the Holy Ghost so strong in this place this evening. She began to worship him and wash his feet with her tears. And the Lord was so moved by her act of worship. He looked at her not as a prostitute, but as his beloved daughter who had come home. And he said, wherever the gospel is preached, he honored her. He said, from today on, wherever the good news of the gospel is preached, people will tell about this woman who came and poured her love on me. Isn't that beautiful? That is the heart of our God tonight. And you sang to me, Kim, all of these accounts are really inspiring and I see what the Lord did in their lives. But you don't know where I am at tonight. You don't know what I'm facing tonight. You don't know the turmoil and the dark place that I'm in. You don't know the sins that I've committed tonight. But I feel the Holy Ghost ministering to you tonight to come home. Come back into His love. Maybe you served the Lord for a long time and something just happened in your life where it just knocked the wind out of you. Maybe you went through a really messy divorce that broke you. And you cried out to the Lord, Lord, why is this happening to me? Maybe you lost a loved one and you became bitter and angry at the Lord because you didn't understand why that had to happen to you. But tonight the Lord is saying, come home. Come home to my love. I want to heal your heart. I want to restore you. I want to put my fresh oil on you. I want to use you for my glory. Make something beautiful out of your life. You know, Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. The Bible says he came so that everyone through him might be saved. And today is the day of salvation. We don't know. We are living in times where people are going home to be with the Lord every day. We see it all over Facebook. Heaven is a real place. It's happening right now. Hell is a real place. But God never ever designed hell for us. He designed hell for the devil and his demons. He desires for you to spend an eternity with him. And if that's you tonight, I want you to just close your eyes right where you are and just Find a moment where you can get alone with him and just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you tonight and I give you my whole life, messy as it is, chaotic as it is, broken as it is. And I declare that you are the Lord of my life. Take my heart, wash me in your blood, fill me with your Holy Spirit and use me for your glory. I turn my back on the wall. I turn my back on Satan. And from today, I choose to love for you Lord thank you for dying for me for shedding your blood for me for rising again on the third day and that you're coming back for me I thank you that from today I'm a new creation the old has passed away and I'm brand new I'm a child of the most high God and I'm on my way to heaven hallelujah let me tell you there's celebration happening right now in heaven all of heaven is rejoicing that you've come back you've come back home 
And Lord, I just pray right now that you baptize them in the fire of your love. Holy Ghost, that you fill them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Baptize them in your love with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And I pray that you seal them by the power of your anointing. Even until that day that none of them might be missing, Father. That you use them mightily for your glory in Jesus' precious name. And if you pray that prayer, I want to encourage you. Get into a church that believes the word of God. That knows the Holy Ghost. That's open to the moving of the Holy Ghost. This ministry, Toda Ministries, is exactly that kind of ministry. And if you're not already in a church, I know that Pastor Toda will be Oh, too happy to come and walk alongside of you and build you up as you as you take these first steps in your relationship with Christ. Amen. Get in the word. Speak to the Holy Ghost. He'll make Jesus real to you. And if you need prayer, please contact me. I'm here for you. And you know what? This is a demonstration of who our God is. He's a good, good father. He's always standing with open arms saying, come home no matter where you've been. You know, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7 says this. It says, this treasure has been given to us. In earthen vessels. What is this treasure? It's Christ within us. The hope of glory. And he's chosen to give us this treasure. In earthly clay vessels. Clay can chip easily. It can get broken easily. It can get shattered easily. It can get dirty easily. Yet the Lord chose to give us this treasure of Christ within us. The hope of glory. In an earthen vessel. Why? So that the excellency of his power can be of him. Not of us. Isn't that glorious? 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9 says, But my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. It's not by your might, it's not by your power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. The only requirement is for us to come to Him and say, Here's my life, Lord, just as I am. I surrender to you. I give you my whole heart. Come and baptize me in your fire and use me for your glory. And if that is you tonight, I want to encourage you to just we are, just begin to lift up your hands and begin to cry out to the Holy Ghost. Father, we surrender and we yield to you. I just pray that you come and touch every person listening to this broadcast right now. I feel the Holy Ghost moving right now. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for your anointing, Father, that you're touching people right now with the lounge in the bed wherever they find themselves that they feel the liquid love of the father wrap itself around you you're feeling the warmth of the holy ghost just coming and healing your heart i just hear the lord saying he's healing the broken hearted some of you are so broken and and just at the end of your of your wits and the lord is just healing you right now he's setting you free from unforgiveness thank you lord you're letting it go by the power of the Holy Ghost, just begin to mention those people's names and say, Lord, I, I release them. I release them. Everything within me, Lord, cries out to be used by you. Do the work that you need to do in my heart, Holy Spirit. Just receive from him. I see the Lord just pouring out his fresh oil over his daughters. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sitayamando. Rembrandelemesonda. Just take a minute to receive by him. The Lord is touching his people right now. I release the fire of God over your people right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Papa. You're, you're giving people a burden for the lost. The Holy Spirit is baptizing hearts right now and giving them a burden for the lost like never before. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Lord. Precious Holy Spirit, touch your people like only you can. We're so hungry, we're so thirsty for more of you, Father. Thank you. There's such a presence of Jesus in this place. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. I just said the Spirit of the Lord say, even as that widow woman was obedient to the prophet, and I believe that this is the word of the Lord in the season, as she was obedient to begin to pour that little oil that she had, as they began to pour that little bit of oil, the prophet told her, go and fetch vessels. And as she poured into the vessels, it didn't run out. And the Lord is saying, even that little bit of Jesus on the inside of you that you have, insignificant as it is, as you begin to become obedient and share the love of God and witness the love of God to the people around you. Maybe it's someone at the, at the shopping center. Maybe it's praying for someone at work. Wherever you are, whatever the Lord is telling you to do, begin to be obedient, to begin to pour that oil that resides on the inside of you, the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And as you do that, 
that there's going to become an increase and an increase. And the Lord will use you more and more for His glory as you step out in obedience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Rema somandea, rama shondea. The Lord is bringing an increase of His anointing. I see it right now. Just receive. If you are angry, I can give you nothing. Just step into the realm of the Spirit tonight and receive from the Holy Ghost. We give you praise, Lord, for what you're doing. And I want to encourage you, before I leave you this evening, I want to encourage you with this word. The Bible says to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. And I want to encourage you tonight, woman of God, listening to this broadcast. Be strong in the Lord in what he says about you. Don't find your strength from what you say about yourself. Don't find your strength to carry on by what your husband thinks about you, by the opinion of what your colleagues say about you, about what the, you think the world is saying about you. No, be strong in the Lord and in his opinion of you. And his opinion of you is that you are deeply and highly favored by him, deeply loved by him. He promised to never leave you and never forsake you. Hallelujah. His presence is so rich in this place. Thank you, Lord. His promise is that He knows the plans that He has for you. Plans to prosper you. To give you a hope and a bright future and a determined end. And the Lord is not a man that He should lie. So stand firm in the Lord and in the power of His might. And watch the Holy Spirit do an incredible work on the inside of you. And begin to use you mightily for, your, for His glory. Now the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his beautiful face to shine upon you and give you his shalom, his peace, nothing missing and nothing broken. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. I've been, it's been so, such a tremendous blessing. I just feel the Lord speaking to me and I have to be obedient before I leave, you know. One thing, Pastor George, I uh, know you're listening. When I read Toda Ministries, it's a, it's a different name. It's an original name. And I googled it. And I, and I saw that it means the act of thanksgiving, of raising your hands and giving thanks and adoration to the Father. And the Holy Spirit gave me this word that even as, you know, thanksgiving is the entering in. We enter His gates with thanksgiving in our hearts and into His courts with praise. And because you've been faithful into ministering to the Lord and ministering to His people, I see the Lord pouring out the dimension of His glory on this ministry that you've never experienced before. He's placing His anointing on, on the worship team and on the worship of this ministry and causing them to transcend through worship and to be able to stand in the realm of His glory. Rasomandia, that weight, that heavy presence of the manifest presence of God is bringing that dimension to this ministry in ways that you've never experienced before. For you to be able to, to move in the realm of His glory like never before. I saw people coming off of the streets without you doing anything, just being drawn into this house and begin to cry before the Lord and weep. And be cut to the heart with the conviction of the Holy Ghost. And many will come to the Lord supernaturally just by the glory that will, that will come and reside in this ministry. And I thank the Lord that He's doing it by His Spirit. The Lord bless you all. I love you. I hope you tune in with me again next Wednesday when I come to you again and bring the word of the Lord and bring His presence. And I really pray that the, you, the Lord use you mightily for His glory. Amen. God bless you. And keep you until we meet again.